Thank you. Um, I want to start with sharing with you a conversation I have in the beginning of this week with a friend of mine talking about the drone in industry. This friend happens to be a colleague in the industry, so he's also aware of what's going on. And we were talking about what are the challenges or what is going on in the industry, and he said, you know what, for me, the drone industry, become, because drones today are so accessible, they are becoming pretty easy to fly, it started with, he said that, for him, the challenge is the operational challenge. How do we make it more efficient? How do we make it more productive? And I was saying, yes, you're right, but as far as I see, or as far as my concern, I think that we have a lot of more to do and think about what are the bottlenecks and how we make it even more scalable and more efficient and more productive to be able to do more use cases with those type of technologies or platforms. And we were talking about it, and it just the reason I'm starting with that is because um, it's connected to what I'm going to talk about and how we can solve those challenges that we have in front of us and what we need to, to do there. So, first of all, maybe I'll introduce myself. I haven't done it. So my name is Yoav Amitai. I'm the CEO of Elsight. Elsight is a company that provides highly reliable communication solution. We probably have the biggest market share in Bivilos market. So we gain hundreds of thousands of flight and drive hours under dozens of different platforms, doing a lot of operation in different geographies, different use cases, like I said, different type of um, aircrafts, um, vehicles, ground vehicles, etc. Yeah. We were even fortunate in the beginning of this event this week when the FAA announced that they grant the aerobotics, um, um, aerobotics drone with type certification. We are part of the of the solution that are providing all the capabilities related to communication, and that's what we do. And this is what I'm going to share with you as part of how I see those humps and everything. But I want to start with a little bit of an history. And that's not a drone. That's one of the first vehicles that was driving the streets in the UK 155 years ago. But I want to, again, before I go into that, there is a small saying in Hebrew saying that Noah sees his own humps. Or we actually say the camel doesn't see his own humps but I want to just make everyone comfortable. We're not riding camels in Israel anymore, but it's just a saying that remains. What we do think, but we are, when, when we are saying that is, how do we find out what is the thing that we don't see? What is the thing that we can promote that it's in front of us or in the back of us, but we cannot see how to do that? So the reason I went back 155 years ago to the UK, um, when they set the rule that one of the riders said that this rule become the limit for new innovation in the automotive industry for 25 years, because that's what the, the, this rule was set for. The, the rule called the Locomotive Act. It was in the 1865, and it was by um, Lord Liberal, that's the name of the governor that was done that in the UK. And they're all, the, today is known as the Red Flag Act. Not sure if, if everyone aware of this, but the person you see in front of this carriage is a per the person that by law, needs to walk in front of a driving vehicle, motor drive vehicle, and wave is a red flag. That was the rule, the first rule for automotive, that was the first rule that if you're driving the street, you need to have someone walking in front of you. Doesn't make any sense, obviously. Um, and if, it was even more than that. That was, a, that was the, the first speed limit. It was limited for five miles per hour in the country and two miles per hour in the, in the city. Think about it, you have a technology that can drive faster, can keep people from one, er from one place to another, but was just stopped by the big lobbyists from the um, horse carriage uh, operators and the railroads companies saying that this is not going to be safe, everyone are going to be killed because of the vehicle, et cetera, et cetera. And again, the reason I went to the history, and I'm going back to the humps, what is our humps? Who is for us, for the drone industry, who is the person who is walking before in front of the drone or in front of those, those carriage, waving with the red flag, and how can we say, or how can we make it more productive? And I think that for us, maybe we don't see it because maybe we are those humps. Maybe we, we the humans that are in the loop, are the humps that affecting that, and that's how we can make this jump step to go to be more productive, more scalable, more safe even, and how do we make it more aut automated, all those processes, and make it into something that work much better. If I'm looking on what will take this industry to its full scale or its full potential, that probably will be through Bivilos. I believe everyone in this room and the room be, um, uh, next to us will say that 
BVLOS is the only way beyond visual line of sight for those who don't know the acronym will be the only the only way this this industry will go into its full potential and for me there are three main fundamentals for BVLOS it's air management air, sorry airspace management autonomy and connectivity and each one of those can be unfolded into a full session we can talk about it for hours and hours but today i'm going to co to focus on the communication on the connectivity because that's where we live that's where l site live and that's where we excel there are different type of communication solutions there are the point-to-point -point RF solution, which most of us know for line of, mainly for line of sight application. There is the satellite up, um, communication, and there is the solar infrastructure, both 5G, LTE, even in some places, 3G and 2G. Um, those are all separate type of infrastructure that we can utilize for our own benefit, but think about how important is the communication. Or one of the reasons why I think the communication is one of the fundamental aspects of reliable BVLOS um, operation is because it's such critical. Think about what happened if the communication doesn't work, if the network doesn't work. Okay, and I'll give you two examples from the more long, long uh, short-term history. So not unlike 155 years ago, I'm going to 2016, when a company named Dean, probably most of you don't know about it, but it's one of the biggest domain name services, DNS services in the world, were, were, had an outage and tens if not hundreds of millions of people was infected because they didn't have access to one of the, or some of the most popular internet services like Amazon, BBC, um, what else was it? Twitter and some other type of those sites. Or even shorter, I, told, I'll, I'll, I want to talk to you about three weeks ago when GM Cruise vehicle was stuck in the middle of San Francisco, I'm not sure if you even heard about it, that was in the press because of a concert that was happening there the network, the cellular network, which the, those vehicles are connected through, was fully congested because of the concert, and those vehicles were stuck in the middle of the street, and now the challenge even escalated because no one can intervene and try to control and take them out. So that's how important the communication is, and we're in the business of, if it's working, no one will talk about us. It's obvious that it's need to work, but if it's not working, or if something is doesn't work, we will be the first, we, the communication guys, okay? We'll be the first one to be blamed. And if the communication doesn't work, nothing in the operation, the entire thing will won't work. And this is why communication is so important. This is why you need to be so picky and think about who is the partner you want to partner with, whomever it will be, when you're thinking about how to build a scalable, sustainable, safe operation when we're talking about highly scalable and highly available operation in BVLOS mainly. Our approach is more of an holistic approach, is not only the RF solution will work or not only the satellite or the cellular, but we're thinking about it as a more and holistic way of how we can buy, combine all of those together to create a reliable network. Like you see in this um, small, um, small video that we're connected basically to everything. And I'm not here to talk about LSAT and what LSAT is doing. I'm talking about the approach of how we take a more holistic approach, think about the problem in, a, in the wider way we can think about, and how we solve those problems or solve those humps that I mentioned before by thinking about all the different alternatives and how we think outside of the box, basically, if you will. And that's what we do in LSAT. And before I'm summarizing my nine minutes, which I just wanted to give you a taste, I want to say that in general, if you are looking on this industry, and uh, one of the reasons why I've, I like to be part of this industry and visit those commercial UEV events and other industry events that are happening is because you see how we all work together because if you understand it or not, we are the bunch of crazy people that 155 years ago drove the street with automotive vehicle and everyone say, you guys are crazy, we have horses, we don't need those vehicles. And today, I'm not sure if you're even aware, but in Vegas streets, it's illegal to ride a horse on the street. So that's where we are 155 years ago and we all part of, of that revolution. So we need to collectively think together, push each other forward and think about what is the hump, who is the person or what is the thing that walk in front of us waving with the red flag with the red flag and stopping us from doing the next step thank you very much